Greetings and peace, everyone. My name is Father Eric Andrews. I'm the president of the Paulist Fathers. And it is my honor to welcome you to the first ever virtual Paulist Appeal. Every year around this time, January 25th, on the feast of the conversion of St. Paul the Apostle, which is the Paulist Patronal Feast Day, Paulist Fathers, seminarians, deacons, associates, parishioners come to pulpits across the country and in Rome to share the mission of the Paulist Fathers and invite you to join us and partner with us in spreading the good news across the United States and Canada. Now, because of the pandemic, we realize that many folks are not going to be able to hear the appeal in person this year. Also, thanks to our many live streaming efforts, we've grown a lovely virtual community of faith. And so we feel that giving the Paulist appeal virtually, in addition to all the other places it's preached this year, is another way of spreading the good news about who the Paulists are and inviting you to join us. So at any point, if the Holy Spirit grabs you during this presentation, I invite you to go to our website, paulist.org slash APA, to make a gift to the Paulist Fathers to continue, sustain, and grow our mission in North America. Or you can dial us if you're watching on the feast day of January 25th, I invite you to dial us at 855 Paulist to speak to a Paulist or a member of our Mission Advancement Office. In a moment, we'll be hearing from one of our finest Paulist preachers, Father John Collins, who will be giving this virtual Paulist appeal. But before we do that, I'd like to invite the Vice President of our community, Father John Banke, to give the opening prayer. Father? I want to say welcome to all of you who are watching this from home. Uh, thank you for your prayers and your support. I also want to give a nice shout out to uh, the cities where I've done much of my ministry, uh, Minneapolis, Toronto, and Memphis. And so let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear and gracious God, on this feast of the conversion of St. Paul the Apostle, our patron, first of all, we thank you for this past year of introspection. Paul was converted instantly on the road. We have much more time over the past months alone to look at what needs to be converted in our lives. We know change is hard, especially the beginning of a new year when so many New Year's resolutions are broken. We ask you to convert our lives. Like St. Paul, make us single-minded in keeping our conversion. Help us to strive for justice and equity and concern for all. Help us to use our talents and ideas and our bounty to build a better society. Unify us to envision a moral society and to work for it. And Lord, because this is a plea for help with our annual Paulist appeal, I ask you to open our hearts to help us build a seminary for our students, to rehabilitate our aging mother house where so many aging priests live. Lord, we hope in you. We trust in you. We are confident that you answer prayers. We ask you all this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father John Collins here. Some people call me Jack. And I am here at the original church, the uh, mother church of the Paulist Fathers here in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm standing before this great big huge piece of granite. It's actually a, a grave marker, it's a tombstone. And somebody is actually buried in here. The person who's buried in here, his name is Isaac. And to give him his full credit, Isaac Thomas Hecker. Now, to be buried in something this big, he must have been a fairly important person, and he was. He founded 
The first order of priests in the United States of America called the Missionary Society of St. Paul the Apostle or the Paulist Fathers, of which I am a member. And I'm here to kind of make a pitch to you to help support the work of the Paulist Fathers. But just let me give you a little bit of background. Isaac Thomas Hecker, born here in New York, spent his youth uh, searching for that place where the aspirations of his soul would be met, where the place where the fullness of all that God was calling him to could be lived. And he spent a lot of time searching. He was actually called the seeker. But where he ended up was in the Catholic Church, and he said later, this is where all of my seeking was leading me from the very beginning. He was so on fire with discovering the Catholic Church that this was the place where the aspiration of his soul, this is the place where the fullness of all that God was calling him to was going to be met. He was so on fire with this, he wanted to bring his experience of finding the Catholic Church to America. So he founded the Missionary Society of St. Paul the Apostle, uh, the Paulist Fathers, that we might carry out the work of bringing uh, Father Hecker vision to America. On all the money that's printed in our country, there are three small words, e pluribus unum. Uh, out of the many comes unity. And he thought, wow, this great enterprise and political organization called America had goals similar to the Catholic Church, that all might be one. And he thought if there's any institution at all that could bring about, if you want the dreams of America, it would be the Catholic Church. And that the America itself, this great uh, experiment and political organization might teach the Catholic Church lessons about democracy. Uh, I, I'm here to ask you to help us continue uh, the work that Father Hecker began. Now, when I was asked to give this talk by my father superior, the president of the Paulist Fathers, Father Eric Andrews, I saw it as kind of a feather in my cap, you know. I mean, he could have asked any number of other priests. So when I mentioned it to some of the priests that I live with, expecting a little bit of, you know, yeah, good for you, Jack. All I got was pity. That's why he invited you, pity. You've been on the shelf for years, you know. I mean, what, what, what do you have left to say? How old are you anyway? I said, well, I'm going on 77. Yeah, pity. Well, I'd like to think they're wrong. I'd like to think Father Eric Andrews invited me to talk about the Paulist Fathers and to ask you to support our work and to participate in it, because I would do a pretty good job. People also said, how stupid can you be to invite people to give money during this pandemic period? Nobody has any money. Well, I get about $3,600 allowance a year, and I am committing $1,000 of that to this effort. I'm going to have a check ready for 250 bucks when this presentation is over. So I'm asking you to dig deep, too. I dug deep. Dig deep. Now, you may say to yourself, well, where's the money going to go? Well... I'll tell you, I, I have, for instance, a small yacht. It's, 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 it's not much. It's 150 foot long. It, it, it has a, a crew of five. And that's all on my tab. Nothing that you might donate uh, would go to maintaining my, my, my yacht. Well, where is the money going to go? Well, I'm going to introduce you to three people, a novice, a student, and the eldest Paulist father who will be 100 years old in three months. And I'm going to let them say in a very, very short little presentation, uh, what it is that your donations would go to to keep them uh, on the way to ordination and the elderly father and how much your, your contributions have helped them. Hi, I'm Zach from UCLA and I'm a novice here at the Paulist Fathers. What I love about the Paulist Fathers is their zeal in sharing the joy of the gospel with modern society. Your financial support and generosity helps us to continue in our mission to form priests who are eager to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the next generation. Hi, my name is Christopher Molano, and prior to coming to seminary, I was a campus minister and a pastoral administrator in Hawaii. What attracted me to the Paulists is their ability to engage and empower intergenerational communities. Your financial contributions support not only my academic formation, but it allows us to refine our skills to build friendships and to build communities. Thank you so much for your support. Hi, I'm Father Jim Lloyd. I am almost 100 years old, 
I am the oldest polis in the whole world. And right now, I am representing my brother priests who are seniors, who have joyfully served God and God's people collectively for hundreds of years. But now, we are lacking, well, not, not just hair, we're lacking eyesight, and we don't hear very well, teeth go bad, we're on walkers and wheelchairs. We can't work anymore. We're just too old. But we pray powerful prayers, and we pray for you, people like you, who do and can support and can support us on our 19th hole. But we have found out how expensive it is to take care of us. So, would you consider donating to the care of our dear, fragile, elderly priests whose evening has come and whose shadows are lengthening? If you would, if you could, I just know Jesus, the High Priest, and our Blessed Lady, Mother of Priests, would bless you abundantly. Thank you. To quote one of our younger priests, Father uh, Stuart Wilson Smith, he said, the work of the Paulist, I'm going to quote him here, is to find myriad ways of never giving up on people. We like to think that really does describe us. Everyone is welcome wherever it is that we serve. And we serve in campus ministries. We serve in parishes. We have a very large publishing company called the Paulist Press. We're into media through Busted Halo. The priest who's filming me right now, as a matter of fact, has a two-hour show five nights a week on Catholic radio in order to bring the message of the Catholic Church to as wide a culture as possible. The Paulist Fathers are in the arts. Uh, one of our priests was recognized as being the best Catholic songwriter in America this year. We have other artists who are, have artwork in galleries as an outreach to the culture in which we live. We do uh, interreligious dialogue. We do ecumenical dialogue. Uh, we invite people who have been away from the church to a program called Landings. We have outreach to the poor, to the LGBT community, to a divorced and single people. We are asking you to help us continue those ministries that anyone who wants to come and learn about uh, the uh, Catholic uh, tradition who wants to allow the story of Jesus to become the story around which they form their lives, or they just want to know what is the story of Jesus. If you help us, you are participating in that endeavor. It's a good endeavor. You know, we have a nice track record, and we're a small group. So if you give, the impact is felt right away. You don't want to, I hope, hear that the Paulist Fathers died and you thought, wow, I could have made a contribution. Without your contribution, we won't be around. If people didn't help us 40 years ago or 30 years ago or last year, I wouldn't be standing here right now. We continue to survive. We continue to do the work that was inaugurated by our Father Hecker to bring the message of God in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit in the Roman Catholic tradition to the American people. This is my plea. My brother said, don't be beating people to death. You'll either give or you won't. If I could get on my knees right now and beg you, I would, but I'd never be able to get up. Our Father President, uh, Father Eric Andrews, is gonna pick up now and tell you how it is you can make a donation to the Paulist Fathers to not only keep our work going, but to become part of the work yourself by the very donation that you give. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, thanks, Father John, for that amazing first virtual Paulist appeal. You were terrific, and hold the date for next year. I may be calling on you again. 
Now for folks at home, I hope you were inspired as well by Father John's words. And I invite you to go to our website, paulist.org slash APA to make a gift. If you go to our website, make sure you designate which parish you belong to. Also, for many of you who are parishioners, you will be receiving an annual Paulist Appeal brochure at your home in the next little bit. So be on the lookout for that to learn more there as well. Now, many of you have already heard about and some have participated in our capital campaign, Hope for the Future. That campaign will help us build the new Paulist House of Mission and Studies in Washington, D.C. We are so grateful for your gifts for that capital campaign. And we invite you to also participate in the annual appeal because the bills keep coming day after day. So thanks, foremost thank you for everything you're doing for us. I know it's very difficult time right now with the pandemic and maybe you're not even able to give a financial gift. Your prayers are enough for us. Now I'd like you to meet some folks from our congregations coast to coast who are also supporting the Paulist in this campaign, the annual Paulist Appeal. So give a listen to what they have to say. And I walked through the doors of Old St. Mary's, was greeted so warmly. Um, the priests were there, there were parishioners there, and I fell in love I and mean, I kept coming back. And their hospitality, the strength of their sermons. Um, I just can't imagine being any place else. I'm just happy to be here to say I love the Paulus and happy that I found them. Uh, for myself, I'm, I love Old St. Mary's Church, but the reason that I go there is, is drawn because of the Paulus priests that are there. I find them very honest and they're extremely practical and their sermons and their attitude is realistic it's, it's something that I, I really really enjoy because it's a total honesty and believable i have known the paulus fathers since the early 1970s including more than 30 years here at holy spirit parish in berkeley over that time they have challenged encouraged inspired and taught me and offered me countless opportunities for ministry leadership and service on both the parish and campus ministry levels. They are very, very good at what they do, and I would not be the woman of faith and leadership I am today without their presence in my life. Our association with the Paulist Fathers goes back over 50 years. We felt we needed a community of people who would reinforce our values, and the St. Paul community has given us that in spades. We thank you for this great anchor in our lives. We love you, Paulus Priest, for your motto, wherever you are, wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. And the Paulist, we feel, are very involved in the human condition. We support you, Paulus Priest, 100%. And we realize that you are so, so important in our country right now. Ever since my undergraduate days, over 20 years ago at the university, the Paulists have met me where I am, have guided me emotionally, spiritually, and mentally through all life's ups and downs. They have married my husband and I, and most recently have baptized my son during a pandemic year. And for that, I am forever indebted to them. I am a true supporter of the Paulus. I have loved the Paulus and their mission and the way they meet everybody where they are and guide them to have a better relationship with Jesus. And so thank you, Paulus. Thank you for everything that you do. And I will continue to support all of your endeavors. Thanks. Hi, my name is Amy Tracy. My husband Dave and I support the Paulus Fathers because we believe in their mission and we know that the contributions we make will be put to good use towards that mission. We also appreciate that the Paulists are welcoming of, of all people at any stage of their Catholic faith journey and people of all religious practices. And we also donate as a way of saying thank you for the wonderful job they do leading our school and parish in Chicago Old St. Mary's. And we also love Isaac Hecker. Thanks, Paulists. Hi, 
I support the Paulist Fathers uh, for many reasons. Um, one, they are an incredible part of our community and they support so many causes and they're always advocating for the homeless, for young adults, for our, just our general community. Uh, they're always volunteering on site and I support them because they also are a big proponent in our Latin community. Uh, they have festivals like Our Lady of Guadalupe, so they're just an incredible part and I wholeheartedly support the Arpaos Fathers. Hi, I'm Aaron. And I'm Alex. And we're here to support the Paulist Appeal. Absolutely. The Paulists inspire us daily. And they really actually brought us together. The first moment I actually met my now wife was at the St. Thomas More Newman Center. Uh, seven years ago? Yeah. Yeah, seven mm -hmm. years ago. Yep. All the way to the point where we just celebrated Father Vinny's 90th birthday. Which was amazing. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Paulus. Thank you. We love and support the Father's Fathers. For us, it all started with the late Father Bill Brimley. He was a great priest, cared for families and children and their education, gave wonderful homilies, and was always welcoming and outreaching. Thanks and much appreciation to the Paulist Father, and may God bless you all for being very appealing. Go hackers! I've been a parishioner of St. John the 23rd for over 10 years now, and I always support the Paulist Fathers during their annual drive because not only do they walk with me on my spiritual journey, but the Paulist Fathers also invite me to walk with them on theirs, and to me, that's what being part of the mystical body of Christ is all about. I'm Thomas Davis, and I'm proud to be a part of the Paulist community, a community that lifts up the gospel in, in ways that no other uh, order or community does, that is able to speak about the Holy Spirit and all its power and brings about a diversity than in sexual orientation, race, and gender like no other. I am very proud to be part of the Paulus community. I look forward for them to be around not just today, tomorrow, but forever. Hi there, we're Nancy and Jim Griffin, and we've been active members of the Paula Center for over 25 years. I came to the Paula Center pretty much at Broker Women in the 90s, and I found just where I needed to be when I found the Paula Center and the Divorce Catholic Group, which, by the way, is where I met my husband, Jim. We have been lucky enough to be able to give back in some small way by becoming a Eucharistic minister, counting the weekend collection, covering the front desk at times, and greeting our fabulous Wednesday night supper club guests. Most of our very good friends are members, and we just can't believe how lucky we are to have the love and support of all at the Paula Center, our home away from home. Thanks everyone for your kind words about the Paulus and our mission. You are a treasure to us. Thanks again for your words. Now I'd like to invite Father Frank Desiderio to offer our closing prayer, as well as tell you about an opportunity that's coming up during the Lenten season. Hello everybody. You know, Lent is parish mission season for the Paulus Fathers. That's the time of the liturgical year when Paulus missionaries are crisscrossing the country giving parish missions, but not in 2021 because of the pandemic. So we're going to try something different. We're going to do a Paulus National Lenten Retreat. The theme is Crisis Spirituality. St. Paul of the Shipwreck, pray for us. It's going to be on Saturday, February 27th, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. on the East Coast, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the West Coast. You can register at paulus.org slash retreat. There'll be three different Paulus Fathers giving presentations and a chance for a small group discussion. So again, 
you can go to our website, paulus.org slash retreat to register. Look forward to seeing many of you there on February 27th. Now I'd like to offer our closing prayer. Many of us were impressed by Amanda Gorman, the National Youth Poet Laureate, who recited her poem, The Hill We Climb, for the presidential inauguration. Now, fun fact, Amanda is a practicing Catholic, and her grandmother, Bill Harmon, is a parishioner at the Paulist Parish of Old St. Mary's in Chicago. So I decided to use part of Amanda's inspiring poem as part of our closing prayer. So let us pray. Gracious God, giver of good gifts, you have blessed us in many ways. We turn to you in gratitude and lift our gaze, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true, that even as we grieved, we grew, that even as we hurt, we hoped, that even as we tire, we tried, that we'll forever be tied together victorious. We lift our thanks to you, O God, for the strength you give us, for the many blessings that we enjoy. Help us to use our strength to fashion your creation into a gift we lovingly offer back to you. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ and through the intercession of St. Paul the Apostle. Amen. Thanks, Father Frank, and thank you at home for joining us for this first ever virtual Paulist appeal. And thank you for partnering with us on our mission to bring the good news to North America. On behalf of all of my brother Paulus, wishing you all the best for 2021. And may Almighty God bless you always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take care.